Hi, everyone. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Take Flight Podcast, episode number 179, with your four hosts, Daniel Johnson, Oluokanola, Pabilo Timbo, and I, Shrel Ahmed. Now, from the title, we are back with a very exciting Take Flight Talks interview episode, where we interview thought leaders and trailblazers sharing with us their journey and expertise on how they've been able to take flight in their respective arena. Now, in case you've missed any of our previous Take Flight Talks interview episodes, make sure to check check them out. We've interviewed senior leaders from various industries, from healthcare to nonprofits, from real estate entrepreneurs to pioneers in the music industry, as well as leaders in angel investing space and founders of venture capital firms. The list is growing, so please make sure to check them out if you haven't done so already. But back to something much more important, and that is today's episode. Uh, And this is a gentleman who, if you're in the UK real estate space, you have either seen him, heard of him, or his organization already. And if you haven't, we don't know where you have been. Uh, We have today Malkit, who is the better known co-founder and partner of the Savoy's team. Now, for those of you who don't know Malkit or Savoy's, let me quickly, quickly fill you in. Uh, Malkit is a UK-based investor, property developer, and partner at Savoy's, based in London, and has been in the space for almost 20 years. Now, with his background in IT and working in the city, he has been able to harness all his years of corporate experience and apply it to becoming the co-founder and partner of Savoy's. Now, the Savoy's team shares a passion for turning tired assets into places people can call home. With over 20 years of experience delivering boutique-style, all-inclusive, affordable accommodation in HMOs, commercial, and single-let units across the southeast. Uh, This team now supports local and overseas investors to achieve their goals in property and have created a specialty within HMOs and the commercial property sector, specifically converting commercial buildings into residential use due to the vast amounts of opportunities that their team can find uh, with the new permitted development rights. Now, they have helped more than 50 clients, completed over 100 projects, and now manage more than 250 portfolios. These are big numbers, guys. Now, if that hasn't set the scene already, some other stats about the Savoy's team to demonstrate their track record and pedigree. They've been finalists 18 times and three-time winners at the Property Investor Awards. They've won so much that they now are becoming judges of the same awards, of the Property Investor Awards, so look forward to seeing that in the future. They're also official business partners of Watford Football Club. As well as this, they've demonstrated strong customer focus with over 235 star Google reviews. Now, building on this, they've also collaborated with finance houses to create their own special lending game changer products. They're writers for property investment magazines and thought leaders. And they've also been featured in BBC Radio 4, The Times and The Independent. Now, with all of this, they've got a great dream team behind them. So the other co-founder, Sanjay, is also a great guy that we've had the chance to connect with and meet. He's also the partner of Savoy's. As well as that, they have a team including Hardeep, who manages their developments, and Lauren managing their properties, as well as the team which continues to get bigger and better. Now, on top of all of this, Malkit and Savoy's has grown a strong following across social media, documenting their process, and most importantly, demonstrating to people what can be achieved with a strong drive to succeed. Now, on top of all of this, and that is already a lot, Savoy's team has really taken the level up with property networking events. And in recent years, organized one of the best networking events that I've had the pleasure to join, really bringing together communities and really helping everyone to learn and enjoy the experiences together. And we look forward to seeing many more events in the future. Now, with all of that, Let's get started with this episode. We'll understand Malkit's journey, the work that Savoy's is doing, and also some of the journey that they have been on. With that, let's hit the music and start today's episode. Take off, take flight with you. Yeah, we never fly, but we're flying. Right, Malkit. So hopefully you had the chance to listen to that intro. It was a very long intro, but I think the achievements by you and the team speaks for itself. Uh, we shared a little bit about your journey from what we've been able to gather. Uh, I think it'd be great for the listeners to to hear it from from your perspective to to kick things off. And of course, a very warm welcome to joining us on the Take Flight podcast episode today. Well, thanks for having me, guys. And uh, yeah, the intro was far too kind, but thank you very much. Um, yeah, so just a little bit about myself and Sanjay. So we actually both met at the age of 11 years old at school. 
Uh, we've been best friends since then. And literally, we started this property journey as well together in our early 20s. And the reason why we started this was we both were working full time. Sanjay was in his family jewelry business. I started a corporate career within information technology. 9 11 happened, lastminute.com floated in 2001. And what I saw was a recession. I saw people being made redundant. And I thought, oh, hold on, look, there's got to be a safety net because I don't want to be one of these 40 year olds being made redundant, being really upset and worrying how I'm going to pay my car loans, my mortgage and all the rest of it. And it, is, it was basically at this point, which I basically looked at property as a way, a way of providing financial stability. Mark, I was just going to interject there. You know, that's very, that's very astute of you to do at such a young age. But why was it property you decided to be the vehicle that you saw the means to an end as, to any, as opposed to anything I, else? i tell you how I, there's a story behind it. And it's actually quite a funny story. So back then, myself and Sanjay actually went out for a night out in town. And on the, we used to live actually quite close to each other. And as I pulled up in the taxi to drop Sanjay off, he goes, look, why don't you just come in for one? You can just walk home. It's only just down the road. I said, okay, fine. So I went into the house and Sanjay's dad was in the living room and I was starting to have a beer with him. Sanjay went straight up and went to bed. And at that time, Sanjay's dad said to me, he goes, look, he goes, you know, buy to let's are great at the moment because at, up until... Yeah, well, up until sort of the late 90s, if you wanted to buy a secondary property, you had to take a commercial loan and the interest rates were quite high and it was a deterrent. But then when Tony Blair came in, they sort of deregulized everything and made buy to lets a now attractive proposition. He said, look, why don't you have a look at this? And I literally went home that day. And you've got to remember back then, sort of 2001, there was no sort of right move and stuff. You used to have local newspapers and in the middle section used wow. to have a housing section so i went through that and I'm, i was flicking through and i found a property in auction locally i thought actually this is actually really extremely good value we went out to auction a few weeks later purchased this property at 120,000. i remember calling some local estate agents in just to make sure i bought the property at a good price and they valued it 150k i thought wow at that time, I was only on an 18K salary, so it was nearly mm -hmm. double what I was earning per year. I'm like, okay, wow, this could be an attractive way sort of forward. So from purchasing that property, I was able to get it refinanced, I think an 85% loan to value of that 150 valuation, pull all my money back out and go again. So in that first year, I was able to purchase three properties and that then the revenue from that, so the net, profit was probably close to what I was earning per month during my job. And then that gave me that sort of property bug just to sort of push forward and uh, acquire more properties. In very interesting. I like that story. And then at, at what point in that year do you think I'm going to quit my job? <laughs> do you know what did, um, did that even come across? <laughs> no, it never, it never came across because we're from like a Punjabi Sikh background and it's always been instilled of us. You've got to work, you've got to contribute and so on. Um, both my mother and father both instilled in me, look, you've got to be working. And the properties were, to be honest, buy to lets are quite passive. So I thought, do you know why I can just do both at the same time. And if it gets to a stage where I can't cope, then, or it requires me to go full time. At that point, then I'll quit my job, which was basically well, about 18 years later. <laughs> And, and then, Malkit, speak to that point, right? So, Shaw mentioned in the intro, you've got a decorated career with your business partner, Sanchez, and what you guys have developed at um, Savoy's. Sure. When you transitioned, sort of going full-time into Savoy's, what was, speak to that journey, what were maybe some of the challenges that you guys were facing, and maybe some of the positive surprises around that time? Okay, so Sanjay was obviously working with in his family business, which basically allowed him more sort of self-autonomy in terms of working hours and stuff. So I was working in the city. So I was basically in London by eight o'clock in the morning. So, and I wouldn't really get home till 6.37, but then I was able to use my time and just be more analytical with deals. Sanjay used to use his time visiting sites and working with our sort of key parties and like builders, uh, brokers and so on. So 
we were just leveraging each other's time and skills. So I didn't really need to be sort of on the ground with, uh, this is all prior to Savoy's. So the changing point for me was when I had my son and then my wife actually wanted to go back to work and then me trying to get some flexibility in my working hours. I wanted to say, look, can I just do two days, half day? You know, I don't just minus my wages and so on. And when this is when you realize work isn't really flexible, they said, look, there's no way you need to do this hour to this hour. And if my son's in nursery, I wouldn't be able to pick him up in time, even if I left at five o'clock because the nursery yeah. shut at six and where I was in the city, it takes me about sort of hour 15 to just get back home. So it was at that point I thought, okay, do you know what? Let me just quit. So I just handed my notice in. I didn't tell my wife. I just handed it in. <laughs> I worked, I worked my notice period and then uh, a few weeks before I just told her, I said, look, by the way, I've done this. And she's like, are you sure what you're doing? I said, look, I'm going to make it work. So basically then that was 2017 that I quit. So I remember the day, the, the last my last day was the 28th of November, 2017. Mm. And I thought, okay, look, we're just going to go hard. So like literally all the money that I had, I just put in deals and we were just churning them out. And I think we were probably doing probably like 20 deals a year. These are projects that we were developing wow. and like everything was in it. I'm like, okay, let's just go, let's just go. And we decided about, Savoy's has always been on the card. So we actually founded the company in terms of like registered a company name, like Savoy's Estates back in 2013. But we had two other additional partners and we couldn't really all of us agree so we fell down to three partners and then eventually a third partner fell out and when 2019 was me and Sanjay was like, okay look on the 1st of April 2020 we're going to go live with this no matter what we renamed the company to Savoy's Properties we said okay let's just go but then obviously 23rd of March 2020 COVID lockdown and we're like oh shit what we got ourselves <laughs> into and we really were migrating tenants so across to us from other agents that we were using we're like okay mm. we're in lockdown we every all our distractions were cancelled we had nothing but time mm. so we'll just make this work so by making it work we did that year we did probably one of the best deals uh, that we've ever done so we purchased an office block in burnham at 670 we spent half a million pounds on it and create 10 flats, all sort of internal conversion. The GDV on that was 2.25 before we even started work. By the time we finished, it was 2.5. So there was a seven figure profit. We put that deal forward for the property investor awards. We won best commercial property development of the year. And the day of actually winning that was 28th of November, 2020 so three years to the date that i actually left our job i'm like okay wow so then then and up until that point we never really had our faces or anything on social media mm. but then when the awards release uh the winning badges and all the rest of it is out there then me and sanjay said okay look let's embrace it because we'll be doing everything in secret no one knew who we were and now we spent then the last couple of years with our faces out there just showing what we've been doing. Nice. And just before I hand it over to Daniel, um, what's interesting is given how you sort of took off when you, when you became full-time, looking back, would you say to yourself, maybe you should have quit sooner? Or I know things happen however they happen, but your own personal journey and, and you know how you see it? I think realistically, I should have quit earlier, but there's always an element of fear. And don't forget, when I was in the city, I had like a great salary and, you know, your pension's being paid into, you've got a family healthcare package, which obviously then comes my wife and then kids and so on. So there were so many perks. And then always my wife was a little bit risk averse. Hmm. So she's never really taken any major risks like doing properties or anything. So it was just a career. She, was, she said to me, just carry on doing both until it comes to a point that you can't. Um, but obviously looking back at it, if we did start and I started with that same energy, then, you know, we could have probably done a lot more, but life's not about regrets. It's about, you know, using the circumstances you've got at that time to sort of push forward and do what you can. And 
what we actually did when we did actually go live with Savoy's was say, okay, we're going to make up for basically what we could have done in the last 10 years with creating a brand. We're going to do it in two, three. So, you know, this, this is where we've been quite innovative in how we market ourselves, how we push ourselves out there. And we're firm believers that rather than going with the flow, you should create your own flow. Mm. And that then attracts attention to what you're doing, you know, and who we are and our message, which is what we've been trying to portray over the last few years. Um, just wanted to, because you gave a few really good gems there, right? I've one that you talked about, but I think there's also a positive and also a negative element of it is the importance of having a business partner. So can you talk about selecting a business partner, some of the pros and cons, some of the lessons you've learned during that whole experience? Because you mentioned when you first started, there was four of you. Now there's two of you. How did you, how did that even help you? Because I guess both of you are sort of doing it part-time if you want to look at a full-time job and also property. Yeah, sure. So it basically, I think if you're running a business, it's about a vision. And the vision is, okay, we're here at the moment, but our aim is to, you know, level up here and how are we going to get there? But what we noticed is once we added more partners in, they just added more distractions and it just led to sort of infighting and someone wanting to, like the business is not making anything at that point that we said, okay, we're going to go live with it. But some people at that point, or one partner wanted a salary, which that basically meant that everyone's going to need to take money out from their day-to-day working just to pay for him. <laughs> Whereas if you have a look at how we've done Savoy's at the moment is both me and Sanjay have never taken wage or a dividend or anything from the business. The idea is as we sort of build up that we actually use that to either invest in marketing, branding, or take on other people to bring them inside the business to help the business grow. Because um, both mine and Sanjay's mindset is if you're going to build a business or a brand, you're talking 10 years. Technically, we're probably now three years into that. So we've got another seven years to go. So we don't want to hinder the business by just Mm. thinking too short term. We'll make our own money by carrying on what we've been doing for the uh, past 20 years which is property deals, you know, making our money on our deals. So those are our separate companies. The the Savoy's uh, group of companies that we're going to have are our babies and we want to just, you know, make sure that they can grow. So our vision is just there. So three years in, we've got another seven years to go. I love that. I love the fact that you're long-term thinking about it 10 years down the line versus so many people get into any sort of business thinking that they're going to get a return and start paying themselves day one, right? Which is not really realistic. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. And you've got to look at it this way. I've seen so many people on social media, they do something and you over monetizing it and you don't really have the experience. You could have gone on a particular course, a particular mastermind. And, you know, six months later, they're now doing their own mastermind, taking students and stuff on. One thing we've said, both myself and Sanjay is we're not mentoring anybody for any monetary value. So we, the only people that we mentor is we do it for free and they're for people that we know and we just guide them along the ways. I think that mentoring business is, um, can be quite ropey because some people don't actually have the experience and they've advised, been advised incorrectly. We had one person that approached our broker and said, recently because I put a deposit down on a property and but I don't have the other 25 uh, the other 15 percent to complete he goes okay but why did you exchange on a property in auction if you don't have the money he goes well my mentor said if the deal makes sense you'll find the money oh, you know um man. yeah they're, they're all like sort of memes but when you then put it into reality it has a massive knock-on effect hmm. No, that's insightful. And I think you mentioned before that you were the one most of the time after work crunching down the numbers. Um, When you're looking at an investment, a development, or even any sort of partnership, what do you look for? Is there certain rules that you follow, calculations? So, um, yeah, so I'm actually quite like a music fan, so I'm quite a hip-hop fan. And I remember listening to like a Tupac song and I think it was called Staring at My Rear View. And at the end of it, he said, look, life's a game. You understand the rules of the game. The game is yours to be played. 
So now when I look at anything, I'm like, okay, let me understand this. So I'm quite analytical and I break it down. So anything that we've gone into, I try to understand the nuts and bolts of it. Okay, what, what is it with this? What is it with this? Have a look at other people that are doing it in real life or on social media or on YouTube. And then look at what angle we can come in to add that value and look at where we can look at something that we can see some value that others have missed. So, for example, if I take that deal that we mentioned in Burnham in 2020, I had to look at that site and I thought, okay, look, do you know what? We can get 10 flats in there. And everybody else that looked at that site said we can only get five. But, you know, I took into account the undercroft, which everyone missed. I got three flats in there. And I went into the loft. I dropped the joists and stuff down, create extra headroom in the loft because it wasn't big, tall enough to walk in. And then I created another two flats in there. So it's just about being innovative, understanding what you can do, where you need planning permission, where you don't need planning permission. So you have to basically add value. Mm. Personally, every time me and Sanjay sit down and we analyze a deal, we always say, what's the angle? What, what are we seeing that someone else has missed? And that's, that's basically the, the main reason we've sort of been successful because Everything's on the market. We're not buying anything that's not publicly available to anyone. Mm. We don't really get a massive favoritism because any agent that's selling a site, their client is the, the vendor. So their interest is in to procure the, the highest value. For us is, okay, we need to sort of work out what we can get in it, work out what the end value is, and then work backwards to work out what profit margin we want. And what's the highest that we can actually offer on the site? So we, our analytical process may be a little bit different than others. So, Mark, I think you um, undersold your your rap knowledge actually, because I'm sure for the for the listeners, they're probably uh, listening and thinking, "Wow, Mark is very knowledgeable about this space, a decorated career." But when it comes to any rap lyric or any conversation, you can make it any point, and somehow you can bring it back to an absolute amazing lyric, which exemplifies the oh, point. He knows it down pat like that. Okay. Very, very. I don't think I've seen anything like that actually. So the whole my whole of voice business is actually based on rap lyrics. Um, <laughs> okay. Believe it or not, um, and even even when we put out some of our posts, there'll be some element of rap music in there. So there'll be a post showing us on site. It'll be like the marathon continues. Which is oh, like, okay, uh, okay, 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 okay. Right. Hustle. <laughs> um, you know, there'll be um, like something like uh, Little Wayne. You know, in this game, they'll they'll underestimate you before they overrate you, and all the rest <laughs> of it. But I've been that actually a massive fan of someone like Jay Z, who's who's very been, who's an amazing artist, but an exceptional business person. Hmm. And if you then just like, I just break down some of his music. And I remember listening, sort of but when I was buying my first property, sort of 2001, he dropped Blueprint, it was around that 2001 period. And in there, like, you know, one of the main tracks I like is You Don't Know. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and it just showed how much confidence he had in himself, you know, and how we just like switched up all the businesses and how we went from, obviously from narcotics to rap to selling clothing and you know how 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 that business just sort of boomed but yeah there's a lot of value in that and i just when i listen to the music i try to understand just those lines and what he sort of meant M mark i'm sure somewhere in your archives hard drive you've got a couple lyrics or raps that you put together i'm sure <laughs> you know what is i actually in my head, I think I should have been a rapper, but I don't know. <laughs> one I don't look like one. One probably I sound pretty bad as well. So, but it's just something that I enjoy. It's a sort of a pastime in the gym, mm. and mm. and it's been quite relevant with what we've been doing. And even if we had something that's actually gone bad, like some a deal that's going bad, I've got issues with the council. You know, I just go for a walk, put some music on, and then I come up with a solution mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you just need to take that break and you need to have that bit of escapism. And I just found that particular point, like hip hop music provided that. 
Love it. And it, I think it really speaks to that point that if you, if you have that right mindset that you have, Malky, that the team has, that also previous guests that we've had have, you can really find this inspiration from multiple different sources and directions and can really provide a lot of ideas and, and solutions. And I, listening to your um, your explanations of some of your, your journey, Malky, I was also reflecting a little bit about the mentoring and the support that you provide and the fact that you make it a specific point to provide for help and support others. Um, and just sure. firsthand, I mean, for the listeners, I, I had the chance to go to a Savoy's event, event that I mentioned earlier on. Um, but I also had the chance to have a, a dinner together with uh, Malka and a guy that I met for the first time, Indy, who, if he's listening, shout out, he's a legend, by the way. I um, had a chance to have some really nice conversations with him afterwards. And actually in that dinner specifically, Malkit shared his journey and also some points around planning permission, things to watch out for, quality of finishes to have. And this is information that he provided to me free. And then actually taking that information away, we, we got approval today um, from the planning committee for oh, our amazing. eight unit development. So we're on track to getting a good uh, refinance out. Brilliant. And I was very inspired by the work that you've, you've shared, Malkit. And I think I share that because it, it, gives me a good segue to the question also the rap discussion i think when i when you were talking earlier to ollie's question i was thinking about that famous drake line about having a a vision bigger than the bigger picture i think in your case you've talked about this 10-year plan and sitting down with with sanjay and having these conversations now not everyone does that is this long-term view something that you and sanjay have had from the early from the early days or is this something that's developed over time tell us about your thinking about this long-term brand building well well, firstly, because we got to a stage where we did 20 years of property and there was not really anything that we haven't done. So when we started doing social media, it was all sort of new. And then you start interacting with individuals such as yourself on socials. And then, then you basically look at what others are doing and say, okay, can we build something from this? You know, can we, can we hit a thousand followers, 5,000, 10,000? So, on. so I think we we're at sort of 23K there. But then what we found quite inspiring was as we were going around maybe to other events, we popped to a peak performance event, people will come up to you and recognize you. So I'm really inspired with what you're doing and so on. And I'm like, okay, we're actually making a difference. Like up, up until then, like I don't really go out too much. We don't really see too many people. We're in our own little bubble in terms of obviously family life. We've got our team and obviously Sanjay, then we have like it and our social life is a lot of people that we had around probably don't see as much because we're quite busy day to day so for us we thought okay look we didn't expect Savoy's to have an impact that it has it's not that we're massive but it's progressed quite well within a short period of time now we just sat down and then we had basically linking back to to wrap someone like Nipsey Hustle just saying nothing's off limit no limits so don't dismiss anything. Let's just think if someone comes up to you and says, okay, look, do you want to get involved in like uh, a film premiere? And we're like, okay, how, how, can, how can we make it work? So when we had one of the events, I think you were there, we had Terry Stone down and we collaborated, made that a uh, film sort of property networking collaboration, which I don't know if anyone's sort of done before. We've now sponsoring someone from the same sort of Indian heritage as us as a boxer, Dillian Chima. So we just, playing a part with a small part in his boxing journey. And then we sponsor some smaller uh, grassroots football teams like Rainers Lane. And they just recently just won um, a local cup at the Middlesex Cup. So we're having an impact and we want to just sort of push that forward. But also the main thing is also not losing focus. So we want to sort of keep giving back. It's not necessarily about trying to monetize it. But we want to see what we can actually do with our brand and what impact we can have and and see where the business will go. So to be honest, I don't really know where we're going to be, but I relate it back to, I don't know if any of you guys have watched uh, the 25 years of Bad Boy documentary. Um, if you watch it, so when uh, Puffy P. Diddy was starting off the whole label, he took everyone to a concert at Madison Square Gardens and he had R. Kelly performing. The concert was sold out. He goes, look, when we push, when I'm now making decisions, look, just remember, this is where we need to be. So then when he did, had that song, Mo Money, More Problems, and everyone had to put on those red boiler suits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had like <laughs> Mace and Locks. They're like, Puff, we ain't putting this on. Yeah. He goes, do you remember that R. Kelly concert? This is where we need to do. Trust me, you need to put this on. So you, so you have to have a vision, 
and nothing should be off limits and you know it should be about expanding your horizons mark you would love to get your thoughts on the current property uh, market and landscape uh, inflation has been at all time high starting to slow interest rates just keep going up and up and up and also at all time high you've got demand crazy in different parts of the country What's just your, your general thoughts and senses around the market today? Um, and potentially maybe our listeners are thinking, do you, in, in, with your experience, see, you know, a housing crisis coming or some form of that? Um, I don't see a massive housing crisis. And the reason will be that most people, when they have their interest rates, when they initially came up, they would have fixed them for five years because historically you're at the lowest point of interest rates. So if you are at 0.25 or 0.5, you would have likely fixed it for five years. Mm. So there's not going to be a massive crisis in terms of people selling off. However, I think this year there's going to be 1.5 more, 1.5 million mortgages that are going to come up for renewal. And there's going to be people that are going to have some frights. So I've seen some people that have been on a 0.99 fixed rate for a few years and their renewals. Now, if they don't, moved to another product their renewal has gone up to 7.49 so there's going to be people particularly probably in the southeast if you're where you have a higher value property rental calculations may not make sense and they may be forced to sell um we're seeing some opportunities as well where landlords have sort of had enough so you've had section 24 which came in which changed how mortgage interest rate is offset against um, your rental income. Mm -hmm. You've got these EPC changes that are coming in, obviously rumors of... Um, Pushback. Yeah, yeah, rumors of uh, notice periods and stuff being cut, so you can't really kick people out of your own property. So a lot of, prop I think at the moment, 66 properties a day are leaving the private rented sector. So there's going to be some opportunities there. But I think long term, the property market will probably in the next 12 years, you'll probably see house prices increasing, probably close to double, I guess, over that. Mm. So if you factor that in. So looking historically at all the the analytics of the numbers, the prices are sort of doubled every sort of 10, 12 years. And I don't really see that changing in the next sort of 10, 12 years. Mm. There's a massive shortage of properties. Rental properties, like literally if you put something up and never seen demand how it is today. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a strange one. I, I think it's probably the first time that we're in this particular position. So yeah, there's, there's going to be motivated sellers for sure. So you've got people that can't afford their mortgages and stuff that are going to sell. There'll be some opportunities there. You've got landlords that have just had enough, but they had a good run. They want to cash it out. They're going to sell. And there's probably going to be some people that fall victim to the current climate within the economy. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just the same as anything else. So, and if, if you're not in a position that you're struggling, then, you know, just sit tight and see it through. And, I, and I'm guessing within the next 18 months to 24 months, you know, it's going to be interest rates will be in a better position. Inflation will be back down and we'll be back in a boom again. Yeah. And are you and are you and Sanjay sort of maybe waiting around this period to see what happens before you sort of uh, a bit more bullish end of the year, start of next year? What's kind of maybe high level your, your strategy over the next 24 so months? How, how our property strategy works is it, it depends on how the market's performing. So if we're in a rising market and we, it's been relatively flat, if it's in a rising market, then we're quite aggressive in terms of our offers. So, you know, so we'd be a lot more competitive. We may sort of go above asking. Mm. As long as we can see some value there. In this current climate now, where obviously interest rates are now a lot higher, you know, there's a little bit more uncertainty on where we're going to be. So we're, we're a little bit, um, probably not as aggressive on in our offers. We now more aggressive in terms of working out where our values and stuff are going to sure. be. And we're putting in more sort of cheeky offers and you'll put these cheeky offers and you'll get someone that will always accept something. So we had one for a client where we were buying something in Basingstoke. We initially, we were looking at 380. When interest rates started rising, 
we weren't really too keen at that 380 mark. We actually put in an offer of 260 and with a four week uh, exchange, which we actually got for our clients. So, you know, we picked up a retail unit and uh, a two story office freehold on Basingstoke High kind of Street for 260. So you'll always find someone, there was just someone that's held this property for 20 years. You know, he bought it a reasonable amount. He's still making a profit. He needed some works doing to it and he wasn't prepared to do it. So, you know, a deal could be done and it and it worked in favor for both parties. And we're just doing that this year and we'll see, we'll keep you in a constant eye on the economy. So maybe a quick question from, from my side, Mark, to build on that response. You know, at the moment, because of the market, with all this information, there's a lot of stress, you could say, in, in some elements of the market. Um, and we were talking about mentoring, masterminds and other offers that there are out there. If someone was new, um, so imagine it's a, a 21, 22 year old market and they wanted to get started in, in property today. What would you recommend for them? Because we have listeners of all ages. Uh, and if someone wanted to start out, apart from listening to Take Fly podcast, what else would you recommend for them to, to get their teeth into to get really up to speed on the property market? So look, if you're going to come into property, then you have to come up with a strategy mm-hmm. that is going to make sense for you. So it depends on obviously where you're based, where you're willing to invest how much money you have. You need to sort of find the right strategy to sort of educate yourself. You can do it. There's a lot of free resources online. There's a lot of people that are offering decent courses and there's people that are offering not so decent courses that are out there, but you need to sort of balance that up, make, have the knowledge. And once you have that knowledge, you can then go out and implement it. I wouldn't really advise just someone to just go into sort of an auction and put their hand up and buy something and not have an idea of what's going on. And you'd be surprised how many people do that. Um, so yes, find out like from us, we always have a strategy. So if you have a look at our 20 year old years, initially we're looking at buy to lets, you know, then we moved to multiple, uh, streams from HMOs and then with the commercial to resi came and it became a lot easier in 2013. We had that. So we've still been doing that. We, if the numbers made sense on like some new build projects, we've taken those up, but we're always keeping an eye on something that's easy to implement. So the two strategies that you'll see that we're constantly putting on our socials are both sort of permitted development. So HMOs, so as long as there's no Article 4 directive in place, you can change a property from a residential home to like up to six bed HMO, which we do. And then you've got basically the commercial to residential, which the government has made a lot easier since uh, the 1st of August 2021. There's only, it's permitted development, so it's a prior approval application, but you just need to satisfy five points from um, sound, environmental, parking, so on. As long as you can justify those points, then it's planning's granted and you can then implement that straight away. We've tried to stay away from anything that requires full planning like a new build block and then you, you know you're sitting on it for months if not years yeah. trying to get some approval market after <clears throat> almost you know two decades two decades in um in the corporate sort of industry sector in the in the city and now transitioning to real estate what do you enjoy most about working in real estate to be honest i i enjoy just the freedom of our expression because obviously if you work for someone the longer you're there, the more your ambitions are sort of cut back. And sometimes your your views aren't taken on board. Like if you're working on a project, you may express yourself, but your project manager makes the final call and you're, you're quite annoyed. So with ourselves, so anything that we do, we can express ourselves in terms of the interior design of it or any externals of a building, you know, within obviously planning limits. Plus, we're in a position that we can actually make some change. So we're probably one of the only developers in the UK that have our own financial product with a, a major lender. You know, so you can actually start making some changes that actually benefit other people out there. Thank you. Um, I, I don't suppose there's any uh, quote from a, a rapper, Dane Dash, that you want to add there? <laughs> <It's laughs> <laughs> <laughs> it is when you talk about working for someone yeah but I, I, I yeah like if well if you look, look at most rappers they like take take 50 cent for example and you know what he's done and 
you know, the way he's expressing himself and like mm. even even the deals that he did with Power, he took something that wasn't that great. And he signed some ex, um, a great deal now with Fox, which doesn't tie him down just only with Fox. He can work with multiple multiple distributors. So, you know, you can, but that's the power of sort of being independent. Yeah, I like the way you frame it around around expression, freedom of expression. Um, Mark, you've mentioned in, in the interview, you've you've in your years of experience within property, you guys have done almost everything. Um, I'm interested to understand what's something that ha you haven't you haven't done, but you're sort of itching to want to do. It could be a, maybe a type of project. Um, maybe it's not even in the UK market, but is there just something which you would love to do at some stage, which is maybe different and unique to your vision or appetite? Yeah, no, we'd love to do something like a hotel project, but that requires some serious capital and um, um, it also requires some serious time. So the hoteliers that we know, they, but once they actually set this up, you have to physically be a part of that business, making sure it all runs. You can't, can't effectively give it to some management because it just takes some bad reviews or some bad experience, which is captured on social, which could completely destroy your business altogether. So I think we quite like the property side because you can express yourself, but it's on an AST. Once it's let, then it typically sorts the work and, you know, as long as you've got the right tenant in place. So it allows you to have, have that control, be a little bit passive, you know, have that income, but being able to go away with your family and not being sort of physically tied down. So it's reason why we carry on doing what we're doing within the industry. Mm. Thanks, Mark. I always try to ask people about like a negative experience or a time it didn't work and what were some of the lessons learned. So whilst being in property, what was sort of a, a tough project or deal that you went through and sort of the lessons learned from there, I think. Be great. To be honest, every day there's always something that crops up within it. It's, and I think on Instagram it could look very glossy, but... You can have situations where you have a tenant that just refuses to pay your rent. And I know there's some reforms that are now going to be coming in, I saw in the papers, but the laws are more focused towards the tenant as opposed to the landlord, which is something that, you know, obviously we're not too keen on, which needs to change, and which is also why so many people are leaving the industry as landlords. We've had situations where we rented out like a family home to someone and they made it into a cannabis factory, you know, and we're like, okay, wow. And um, yeah, we've had to deal with the insurance companies trying to sort of put the house right. We've had, um, <clears throat> we had quite an interesting situation where we had engine, an engineer. <clears throat> we had an engineer that was working for British Airways. He, he passed all his credit checks. He looked great. You know, he turned up in a brand new car. But what we didn't realize, he was a recovering heroin addict that went to rehab I met a girlfriend who got him onto more harder substances. And then a couple of months down the line, he stopped paying his rent. When we rent around there, um, you know, it's basically sort of a crack in for our apartment. And uh, we had wow. to sort of work with his parents to try to kick him out. There's, um, you know, been in incidents with like ceilings and stuff falling through with like burst pipes or like a, a rat that, that somehow gets into a property and chews through something. So there's probably nothing that we haven't experienced. It's not, what we found is it's not about what happens to you. It's always about how you react to a situation. So, you know, I try not to, I look at it as a business. I never, I leave the emotional side out of it. I'm okay, let's just fix it. Let's just get this all sorted. Then we can worry about who's to blame or whatever afterwards. Mark, I'm not going to lie. I feel like doing some routine checks on my properties now after what you just said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you'd be surprised. Like Real stories, so, yeah. So much is what... what we, we've seen so much so but and it's always the ones the properties that are the quietest the ones that pay on time and all the rest of it they're the ones that you probably need to check <laughs> <That's what laughs> I but i think Malky, there's been a, a lot to unpack for the for the listeners so just thanks again for all the great wisdom that you've that you've shared i think what we'll do now is we'll go into the the quick fire round where we ask five questions uh, for you and we'd love to get the the answer that comes to the the top of your your mind so you're okay to enter the quick fire round yeah sure let's do it perfect so first question market what is the worst piece of advice you've received the worst piece of advice was when i wanted to first look at buying a property and i asked someone that didn't own a property 
And he just put me off. He just said, no, you don't want to buy that. The market's at the highest and it's going to crash. And this was probably a year before the first property that I bought. And I had the funds and the, the mortgage and everything in place. And he just put me off. And that property at that time was 130K in 2000, sort of 2000, 2001. And today that property is probably worth probably 600,000. Have you invited him to any of your Savoy's events? By the way? <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop speaking to him now. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. So hopefully, I mean, if he's listening to that, uh, this episode, thank you for sharing that advice to Malkit. You ignited a beast in him. Exactly. Um, the, the second question, Malkit, is what's the best piece of advice you've received? So the best piece of advice was actually from Sanjay's dad was to just go out and buy something in buy to let. And, you know, he basically ignited something in me and, Obviously, I found that property and then took that decision and it's obviously led to me being here today speaking to you guys. Amazing. So shout out Sanjay and his uh, his father. And I think for anyone that has the, had the opportunity to meet Sanjay, you see a lot of those values and wisdom also come across when speaking to him. So give him uh, also a big, a big shout out. Uh, question number three, Malkit, which is a piece of content that you're loving at the moment. Can be book, can be a book, can be digital media, a podcast, whatever. Um, I tell you what I did listen to was um, Rick Ross's audible book, Perfect Day to Boss It Up. And there's like so many gems. There's so Love many it. gems in there where he said from, look, it doesn't matter where you are today. Because just remember, every worker, every boss starts off a worker. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and there's elements, even if you're established, saying that always know your competitors within your industry because you mm -hmm. can learn from their successes and their failures. And, you know, it was just so many chapters of just great nuggets of information. Love it. This is going to be added to many people's list, I think. And this is a side question, Malkit, but only because we've mentioned about rap and hip hop and music. Is there any specific album that you've listened to recently that has become very quickly the most repeated album in your in your playlist? I, I tell you what I've been listening to recently is I was in the car with Hardy a few weeks ago, just before I went on holiday. And he put on a Rick Ross track and it was like mafia music. And they had one line in there just stuck in my head. And it was basically just Rick Ross saying, look, I had to come up with a strategy to come up mathematically. I did it for the okay. city, but not everybody <laughs> mad at me. Like, I'll tell you what, like every day I'm in the gym, I'll just play that. I'm like, wow. But then it, it resonates with me because it's the same thing that we did within property because, or anything that anyone does in business because you want to come up with a strategy that you're going to make money because mm. that's the whole purpose of a business. But it finding the right strategy is obviously the key. Love it. Love it. Amazing. Um, so the, the second to last question that we have for you, Market, which is what is something that you're curious to learn more about at the moment? Uh, curious to learn. Actually, to be honest, one thing that we're actually looking at doing and we've brought running on side is basically just more on the YouTube stuff. So obviously we've been quite focused on just putting our content on Instagram. And obviously we then just over a year ago, we've started using LinkedIn a lot more, but I think YouTube is something that we're going to be exploring and just pushing some, some content out there. And it's a way, another way of just sort of giving back and showing some of the gems that myself and Sanja have and just giving those out there for free. And then also just uh, documenting in a lot more detail how we've been doing our projects great looking forward to to seeing the amazing amazing content and especially using your instagram as what it what it could look like on, on youtube so looking forward to plug in and then the last question malkit what does take flight mean to you uh, i think it's a great podcast in terms of you guys see you guys are amazing and it's a way of just getting some key bits of information across that could change other people's lives and mm. you know it, I really like, like the fact that you mentioned, I think it was episode 174, did you say, earlier? 179, I think. Yeah, uh, we're getting close to that 200, yeah. 200 number. Yeah, well, to, to actually get to that number, that just shows dedication. And the thing with most people is, you know, everyone wants to start something and someone starts something and you, you give up. But if you want to be successful, is the whole purpose is you don't give up at all. So you guys to take so much time out to actually get to that 179 number and 200 i'm sure shortly is amazing Great. thank you thank you yeah. thank you market for the for the kind words i think with that i'll pass it over to, to daniel to to close us off so market for for all of our listeners who want to find you on 
socials on whether it's LinkedIn or on Instagram, what would your handles be? So you, you can share that with our with our audience. Sure. So if you want to connect with us, you've got Savoy's Properties on Instagram. And if you type in Savoy's Properties on LinkedIn, you'll be able to see us there. Firstly, on behalf of all of us on the podcast, the host, we would like to thank you, Malkit, for spending time with us and sharing your wisdom and gems for the last hour. Um, so we really appreciate you being on here. And it's definitely going to be one for, for, for us to listen back in future years. For all of our listeners, thank you for listening. If you have any feedback for us, you can find us on Instagram at Take Flight Podcast. If there is anything you want to ask or any topic recommendations, please hit us up in our DMs. Find us also now on TikTok and also find us on YouTube and Take Flight Podcast. Until next week, stay safe and God bless. Take off, take flight with you. Yeah. Oh, we never fly, but we're 